So given that this is a really quick session, only 25 minutes running time, I'm gonna get going um, and uh, so that we don't uh, overrun. My name is Jason Morrison. I serve as the president of the Pacific Institute and head of the Sea Water Mandate. And I'm gonna try to kick things off before I hand to my colleagues. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned, about 25 minutes to work with. So I'm gonna say a few remarks uh, to uh, kick, uh, set the stage. And then I'm gonna hand to a colleague, uh, Lamar Barnes, CEO of Carita America, as well as our, our friend and colleague from South Africa, Faith Lawrence, who's also gonna talk about uh, their reflections on the, on the Water Action Hub from the perspective of GIZ uh, and the water program in South Africa. And then my colleague uh, Lillian is going to do a run through of this new uh, build out of the Water Action Hub that we're very excited about and that we'll be looking to uh, go live with uh, around the beginning of Q4, uh, right now in the final uh, coding elements. And then we're gonna end with a, two survey questions that we hope that you'll spend a few minutes to uh, respond to so that you can give us some feedback on the elements of this that are, are uh, most uh, resonant for you. So a few words about the Water Action Hub. And for those that are familiar with this platform, we launched uh, the Water Action Hub in 2012. Uh, we initially had thought of it as a network to connect people uh, with people. The idea that uh, there was action happening in various basins and if, if organizations could only know who else was interested in collaborating on water, that we could accelerate uh, progress on projects and initiatives to address priority water challenges. Over time, we began to appreciate that there was a real opportunity to connect uh, users of the hub with information that they can use uh, to um, um, improve their water management and performance and uh, to learn uh, from the experiences of others that have done partnerships on water. But this most recent uh, addition, I think, is a, a real cornerstone for how we can think about uh, the, the evolution of the hub. And that is the notion that uh, businesses can enter information about their own practices and programs on water and confidentially do so in a way that will allow them to benchmark their performance against peers in their own industry sector and then have that information and that benchmarking inform the, the suite of information that's provided for the company on the actions it could take, as well as the collective action potential to work with others in geographies of cared, shared interest on topics of uh, determined interest. So we're really excited about this build out and you're gonna learn more about exactly what that looks like in due course. But first, let me turn uh, to our colleague, Lamar Barnes. Thank you for your introduction, Jason. I'm Lamar Barnes from Carita America. Since our establishment in 1949, the Carita Group has consistently conducted business in the field of water and the environment. Over the years, we have contributed to the creation of a sustainable society by striving to realize our corporate philosophy, which is study the properties of water, master them, and we will create an environment in which nature and man are in harmony. Now, however, the complexity of water resource issues is increasing due to the effects of climate change and other factors. And we realize every day that it is no longer possible to solve these issues through the efforts of a single company alone. Therefore, through the activities of the Water Resilience Coalition, Carita hopes to work with companies and organizations around the world that have similar ambitions to strengthen water sustainability. Today, I would like to talk about some benefits of using the Water Action Hub 4.0, which is the latest version. As you may already know, the Water Action Hub is an online platform that aims to promote collective action in water stressed basins by visualizing information on companies and NGOs working together on water resource issues. The Hub also contains detailed information on water availability, quality, and accessibility in each basin. As it becomes more and more difficult for companies to solve problems on their own, I believe that by bringing together all the people and organizations involved in this platform, 
and utilizing the accumulated information, we can have a positive impact through collective action. This will be the fastest way to solve problems related to water resources. On the other hand, it is important that companies review their own water stewardship and take appropriate actions as needed. Lillian will introduce more details shortly, but the Water Action Hub 4.0 was recently expanded by adding new functions that include a self-assessment tool so a company may assess its own water stewardship. It will also be a one-stop service for additional resources such as best practices and case studies. The Water Resilience Coalition and CEO Water Mandate will continue to develop the Water Action Hub by expanding information and functions related to water, aiming to establish a unique and comprehensive platform from which we can generate many solutions for problems related to water resources. I believe that today's session has been a wonderful opportunity for us to introduce this meaningful platform to companies, NGOs, government, and other parties. I would be pleased if you could share information about the Water Action Hub 4.0 with those who could not attend today's program. Together, let's use the Water Action Hub so we may realize global water resilience. Thank you, Lamar, for those words. We're gonna immediately turn to Faith Lawrence, the country coordinator for GIZ in South Africa under the Nature's Program. Hi everybody, my name is Faith Lawrence and I work for GIZ's Natural Resources Stewardship Program in South Africa. GIZ is the German Agency for International Development Cooperation and we've been working as Nature's uh, on the theme of stewardship and linking stewardship to economic development and resilience for a number of years. We work currently active in five African countries and I work specifically on the program in South Africa. As Nature's, we've been grappling a lot with how do we support our partners who are engaging in our multi-stakeholder dialogue platforms in a meaningful way um, with water stewardship. And for many, um, the question is asked, what is water stewardship and how do we really um, make a contribution to this whole stewardship um, issue that's been on the table in many of our countries. So we've been very pleased to be collaborating with the Water Action Hub 4.0 um, to try and um, really make available and share this fantastic resource um, um, on all things stewardship and collective action. And for us, 4.0, which is all about connecting, learning and sharing, is a wonderful starting point for companies wanting to start their own water stewardship journey, but also trying to learn about what water stewardship initiatives are taking place in other parts of the world, as well as how they can actually make a contribution to a collective issue within their catchment or in their city. Water stewardship for us is all about um, understanding one's own water usage and risks and the Water um, Action Hub has a fantastic benchmarking tool as an example that enables companies to not only um, understand how they are addressing water security challenges at plant level but also how they measure against industry peers. So there's a number of different tools and resources and we are really um, excited that we are able to make these resources um, available freely to to all our stakeholders who are actively wanting to get involved um, in water stewardship initiatives but also collective action and as we know collective action is not always an easy um, is an easy journey and uh, what's wonderful about the Water Action Hub is it, it really um, provides information about how other coalitions have been formed and how different parts of the world are addressing water resilience uh, um, measures uh, together with uh, stakeholders across industry but also together with government and communities. So we are very excited about this platform and we really wish the um, CEO Water Manage, Water Action Hub team all the best with their endeavors and we uh, fully commit to um, its usage and support it uh, with the work that we're doing around water stewardship as GIZ Natures. So all the best. Terrific. Thank you, Faith. So uh, a number of folks have already alluded to what this build out of 4.0 looks like. And now we're going to spend a little bit of time walking through some of the key elements of that. Over to you, Lillian. 
Thank you so much, Jason, for the introduction. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with a few slides as we walk through this together. And I'll just say I'm really excited and grateful to have the opportunity to share this with you all. And as Jason has already mentioned, we have a couple of uh, poll questions at the end of this session. We're calling this the beta version because we're taking this time between now and the World Water Forum to really strengthen and refine our offering. And so thank you all for taking the time to join us. Um, we're very, very excited. So Jason has already given a background on the Water Action Hub. You know, we've been around since 2012 as a collaboration and knowledge sharing platform for water. But just to offer a little bit more detail, the Hub as it stands currently, uh, you might think of it like a dating site for water partners. It's a way for organizations like businesses, NGOs, technology providers, agencies, consultancies, to get an idea of who their water neighbors are and potentially build new partnerships. So with that background, I'd like to walk you through some of what's new with the Water Action Hub 4.0. Uh, as we've mentioned, there's the self-assessment component for companies. There's the scorecard and next steps also for companies. There's the resource library, which is for anyone to use, freely available. And then there's the collective action hub, which many of you are already familiar with as the Water Action Hub. And I want to take a moment here to say all of this is available free of charge. So let's start with a self-assessment, which is a survey of sorts to allow a company to understand their current water performance. The assessment draws on our partnerships uh, with other organizations in the water space. The Water Action Hub has had a long-standing partnership with CDP, and we're very grateful to be collaborating with them on this new expanded Water Action Hub 4.0. And so part of that collaboration, our questions are modeled after uh, CDP, so a company that has completed the CDP water disclosure will find this assessment very easy to complete. And then also we've modeled some of our questions after GRI as well. Again, the goal being to make this assessment um, as easy as possible for companies to complete. That being said, this is a self-assessment tool. It's not a disclosure platform. And so it's, very, it's a very different um, tool and opportunity for companies to understand their own water usage without necessarily sharing that information publicly. I'd also like to mention that we have both a qualitative and a quantitative component to this assessment. Um, so we consider it to be a very thorough assessment of a company's water performance. And here's an image of what the assessment looks like. You'll see a progress bar at the top. I will say we have around 30 questions. So we are, we're being very thorough in, in this assessment and a company that completes this assessment will then uh, receive their scorecard. So let's talk about the scorecard and next steps. This is a way for a company to receive customized guidance based on their own unique journey with water stewardship. We are offering a way for a company to benchmark their progress against industry peers. Obviously with water stewardship, uh, the industry in which you operate is going to be paramount in your, in your water performance and your water use. And so having that ability to compare your own actions, your own practices against others in your industry is really a value add of this tool. And then, of course, once you receive this benchmark, this scorecard, you also receive uh, tailored next steps based on your results. So we're seeing this scorecard as a way to simplify the complex water stewardship tool environment. And, you know, this is something we've heard from our partners, that there are so many tools out there, each of them addressing a different component of water stewardship and really we believe that by offering companies a clear line of sight on what the next logical step for their company is to manage their water risks, to undertake climate resilience, um, we believe that to be a key value add of this tool. I'll also note that our graphics, which I'll show you in the next slide, they're designed to be shared internally with the C-suite. There is some interest, again, from our partners in the ability to help communicate water risks and opportunities um, internally within a company. And then of course, if a company chooses to, they could also share externally. And so this is an image of a sample scorecard, again, based on the results from your 
survey that you've taken, the tool will identify the next steps, the best practices, we're calling them, uh, for your company to consider undertaking. And so this scorecard presents both the company's performance compared to others in the same industry, but also these recommendations for the next steps, including case studies um, and resources. And we really, this is where our, our many partnerships in the water space um, are, are essential because we are directing companies outward to our partners um, to the most relevant tools for their own unique uh, journey through water stewardship. So you've identified best practices that your company may wish to undertake. Well, how do you get guidance to undertake them? That is where the resource library comes in. We're offering a comprehensive toolbox of stewardship resources, not only to companies, but to anyone who visits our website. And our goal here is to make these key resources accessible. This is an example of how we are building on the work that we've already done at the CEO Water Mandate for many years. We currently offer a, a toolbox of this type that is now being strengthened and expanded as part of the Water Action Hub 4.0. We list more than 500 resources uh, for everyone from businesses to NGOs and others. For businesses, the library will highlight these next steps, as I've mentioned. But again, we also offer resources for other types of organization as well. And I'll note that the, the library is continuously updated. So you will get the, the best and most recent stewardship science. Here's an image of the library showing that uh, there are many different ways to search, such as limiting to resources that address your industry or exploring resources that relate to the region in which you operate. And then finally, it is our hope that this assessment and uh, guidance tool will help make possible collective action. And to that end, we've linked these tools to our current Water Action Hub, which will now be known as the Collective Action Hub, as a way to catalog your organization's good work on water and also catalyze new partnerships. So many of you are familiar with the existing Water Action Hub. This represents an expansion of what we've already offered, as Jason has mentioned, since 2012. Um, again, a free global online collaboration and knowledge sharing platform. Currently, we have more than 1,000 organizations and 1,700 projects. Um, again, our audience is diverse from businesses, NGOs, technology providers, agencies, and others. And this is all available free online at wateractionhub.org. And we're launching some new tools as part of this uh, self-assessment suite of, of tools. We've launched some new location tools that offer companies and others the ability to have more privacy and flexibility in the kinds of locations that they are expressing an interest in potential collaborations. And then also we have basin data tools that support decision-making and consensus building. So I know we are drawing near the end of our short session here. I wanna take a moment to pause and put my email address up here on the screen. At the CEO Water Mandate, we do have staff who can help organizations, whether you are a business or an NGO or another organization, help you get connected with these tools. Um, and I'll just, again, my, my email address is up there on the screen. And while you have this moment to note it down, if you're interested, I wanted to take a second just to thank our partners. Um, again, we're very grateful to Carita and to GIZ for contributing their remarks to this presentation. Um, but we're also, you know, this has been a very collaborative effort. And so with that in mind, we're thankful to our partners at CDP, uh, Microsoft and Cummins who have all participated in the development of this tool. We're very grateful. And so I hope you've all had a chance to note down my email address down there at the bottom. I would also like to say that if you have uh, questions or comments, we won't have time in this session to answer in the chat, but you can go ahead and leave us a message on Pathable and we will um, incorporate that into our thinking and potentially find a way to answer it on our, our FAQ page or a blog post or something else along those lines. But I'm gonna now go ahead and stop sharing my screen uh, because I would like to urge you now to turn to the Pathable app. If you go to the Pathable app on the right hand side of the screen, you should be able to see uh, a note about poll questions. And I just wanna take a moment now, give you a second to access those poll questions and perhaps we can talk about them briefly. Um, the, the, poll, the idea behind the poll questions, again, as we're working on this beta version, 
that will be uh, formalized and launched in its official and final iteration at the, the forum in, in the spring. We would love to benefit from your thoughts, particularly for anyone in the audience who is a, a part of the business community. And so the first question that's there on that pathable poll uh, section is for businesses, what barriers do you imagine might prevent your business from using the Water Action Hub 4.0? And so we've put some ideas out there. Uh, perhaps you already use existing tools for these purposes. You believe the assessment will take too long to complete. Uh, you use other channels to form water stewardship partnerships. You're not currently interested in collective action or something else. Whatever it may be, we really would be interested in having your, your thoughts and your feedback. And if you have more to offer, please feel free to, to mention it in the Pathable chat. Um, again, we're just very interested to hear your thoughts and your feedback on this. And then in the same vein, the second question that I was hoping to ask on Pathable through the poll is, Again, for businesses, what element of the Water Action Hub 4.0 would be most useful to your business? And so perhaps you're interested in this benchmarking concept, uh, comparing your water performance to industry peers. Uh, perhaps you're interested in tailored next steps based on the results of your assessment, or perhaps it is the library of resources or the collective action hub uh, possibility of connecting with partners that are most interesting. And then of course, if you're not a member of the business community, we still are very enthusiastic to hear your feedback. And so I would urge you to either send me an email or uh, mention something in the, the Pathable chat. But with that, again, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Jason to deliver our closing remarks. Great, thank you, Lillian. And uh, I hope this um, a presentation gave you a flavor of what to expect uh, with this 4.0 build out. Really interested in, in uh, developing this with feedback from prospective users. So uh, not only the Pathable chat, uh, but uh, function, but if you have now uh, Lillian's uh, email address and can reach out directly about what you would like to see as we build the tool, we'll do our best to take that information into consideration in these final stages. So let me also thank uh, Lamar and Faith for the time that you took to be with us today. Uh, and for all of you, I hope you have a great rest of your World Water Week. And thank you, Lillian, for your presentation and for your ongoing management of the Water Action Hub platform. Take care all, and uh, we'll see you in future sessions.